Welcome to the World Poetry Café and the Family Tent. Hello everybody. I'm just like you. I'm in lockdown. My name is Claire Bevan and this is going to sound so sad. I had my birthday yesterday and I couldn't have a party or any balloons because there was no one to come. And then I thought, well, why don't we have some fun anyway? And I hope this first poem will give you a bit of fun and you might be able to do it in your house with your family. And it's called Our Crazy Christmas. Christmas, it's springtime, it's April, but it's lockdown, spring 2020. Our lives felt so boring. We all heaved a sigh. Then somebody said, let's give Christmas a try. For no special reason, we didn't know why. Here we go. But the days were so dreary, our hopes hit the wall. So we ransacked the loft, hung a star in the hall, while Dad, wearing antlers, threw sweets at us all. We dangled our garlands of holly leaves, fake. There were cards to be crafted, a grotto to make, as Mum perched a penguin on top of a cake. We couldn't find crackers to rattle or flap, but we told silly jokes and we all shouted, snap! Then we sang happy songs so our granny could clap. The pot plants wore tinfoil, the puppy wore wings. We wrapped empty boxes with ribbons and strings and we acted a play about camels and kings. We sat round a picture of flickery flames. We tried to guess film stars and world famous names. Then we all got the giggles, invented daft games, when suddenly, somehow, without any snow, we all heard a jingle, a merry ho ho, and we gazed at each other. The room seemed to glow. Our house was still dusty, our paintings still wet. There weren't any glittering tables to set, or huge heaps of presents, or riches. And yet, that was a Christmas we'll never forget. So if you get bored at home, just do something really silly. Now, the next poem might answer a question. Because nearly always, when people come and talk to people about books and stories and poems and all the sorts of plays they might write, everyone always says, where do you get your ideas? And sometimes I just get my ideas walking around our village. And one day, in the springtime, I saw two naughty birds and they had spotted an old mat outside the house and they were tearing it to bits. And I thought, those are naughty magpies. I know all about magpies. And uh, the magpies, well, this is sort of like a magpie. And uh, I hope my beak doesn't get in the way. And uh, it, this one is called Home Sweet Home. Mrs. Magpie, loud, and grumpy squawked. This nest is far too lumpy. It's far too breezy round my legs. It's far too scruffy for my eggs. Oh. Mr. Magpie flapped his wings. He swooped and searched for shiny things, gifts to please his bossy bride. Brought them home with speed and pride. Mrs. Magpie squawked again. Oh, where's your sense and where's your brain? Shiny stuff won't mend the floor. 
you swap this useless junk for straw. <sighs> Mr Magpie, slightly stressed, he fluttered east, he fluttered west, until he spied an ancient mat, frayed by feet and clawed by cat. Mrs Magpie squawked with joy. Oh, doormat strands, you clever boy. And all that week, the busy birds fixed their nest with woven words. Now, the happy magpies greet feathered friends with wipe your feet. And when their chicks have fledged, and flown, their nest will still say, welcome home. I wonder if you've got welcome home on your doormat. Um, I once asked some children what they would put on their doormat and one boy put his hand up and said, hello, I'm Matt. I think that was a good answer. But right, now we've got trouble. We've got the cat turning up. Here she is. Right, really naughty. So the birds have got, they've got to look out and uh, they've gone and uh, you're up to no good, aren't you? Yeah. If you've got a cat at home, you know. So this one is really about a cat that we used to own and his name was Merlin. And, uh, well, he was quite a naughty cat. So it's called Todd, the Backyard King. I changed his name because I quite like Todd. I'm not your fluffy lap cat who purrs to hear you sing. You're curl up on the mat cat with dainty bell to ring. You're pretty pounce and pat cat who chases after string. I'm Todd, the cat a rat cat, the mighty Backyard King. I'm not your snooze and yawn cat with soft and velvet paw. Your doze upon the lawn cat with sheathed and secret claw. Your, your slink about and fawn cat with meek and milky jaw. I'm Todd, the blood at dawn cat, who takes his breakfast raw. I'm not your prize rosette cat, my whiskers fray and bend. I'm not your matching set cat, one ear has lost its end. I'm not your preen and pet cat, my coat's too torn to mend. But when I'm cold and wet, cat, I'm Todd, your fireside friend. Oh, never, never trust a cat completely. Uh, they've always got a secret life. Now, I think it's coming up for the time. If we were going through the year, we've had... Uh, well, a mad Christmas, obviously, at the wrong time, and we've had springtime birds and the cat who's looking for them. Um, but this one is completely different because we're hoping, aren't we, in a few months' time, we'll be able to go on outings and maybe go to the zoo. And uh, I'd written this poem when I'd actually seen these naughty little creatures um, and then found out that they were actually very sweet. It's some meerkats, and if you've seen them, you know they're pretty squeaky, aren't they? And uh, they're very good at looking after each other's children, you know. So this one's called Meerkat Message, and let's just imagine we're at the zoo. Meerkat Message. I'm squeaky, I'm a meerkat, a sit-up straight and peer cat. A bright and busy eyes cat, a watch the spooky skies cat, a dash about and bound cat, a scurry underground cat, a catch a bug to munch cat, a scorpion for my lunch cat, a wrestle with a snake cat, <laughs> 
and make it squirm and shake cat so greet me with a cheer cat because I am a mere cat it's not a cat at all is he <laughs> um, right well in the hopes that maybe you'll be able to get back to school um, we'd be coming up to the summer term and the school trip maybe you'd even go and see some meerkats and uh, but really horribly you wouldn't want to be on this school trip mainly because not of the teachers they're fine it's the driver you've got to look out for so here we go on the school trip and hold on to your seats the coach arrived and we bagged our seats, we drank our drinks and we chewed our sweets. And the driver yelled, hold tight, keep still. And we whisked away down the zigzag hill and the engine steamed and the world flew by. And our stomachs lurched and we seemed to fly. And the road was a roller coaster ride and the children screamed and the teachers cried. And the bends were far too sharp, too quick. And we all turned green and we all felt sick and the tires all screeched and the eardrums popped and our insides span and the whole thing stopped. <sighs> then the driver yelled, that's it, we're here. And we staggled out with a feeble cheer and the driver yelled, you forgot my tip. You won't catch me on your next school trip. <laughs> Don't go on that coach. Ask your teacher for a much nicer one. Um, right, so here we go. And uh, now, I rather like a lot of the old stories. And sometimes writers like to steal the stories and bring them up to date. And this particular one is the one that just about everybody knows. So I shall put on for this one my sort of story hat because this is a, a poetry and story sort of poem and um, it's one that you will know but I've slightly changed her name and instead of Cinderella, who's terribly sweet, she's called Cinderella. Cinderella read the news. Oh! Royal Disco! Rock and Blues! knew her clothes were far too scruffy cleaning jobs don't pay enough -y. boris buttons kind but poor helped her brush the cafe floor oh cheer up cindy there's a chance you may still go to that dance here yeah. my last pound could set you free if you try the lottery yeah on the tv screen that night cindy's numbers sparkled bright up she jumped from battered chair i've become a millionaire oh she sold her story to the press and bought a cool designer dress crossed the town to meet her prince wearing shoes that made her wince Ooh. she kicked the shiny things away she danced barefoot till break of day while the prince turned up his nose at the sight of cindy's toes chose instead an ugly sister <laughs> a girl prepared to risk a blister meanwhile cindy didn't care, no. She bought the cafe in the square. She changed its name to Dream Come True and married Buttons, quite right too. Because every time I go to a pantomime and the rotten old prince just sails in and gets the girl and Buttons was the best friend she ever had. So I wanted to put it right. Now, if you do get back to school, with a bit of luck, there will be the school sports. But alas, 
if we don't get back it's all going to be hopeless isn't it and a bit, a bit sad um, so let's have a bit of sport going on yeah I said ah <laughs> my technical advisor is is explaining I should take my hat off but actually I'm just going to put a whistle on <laughs> as this is plenty of stories Martin <laughs> Mind you, I will need to take the hat off first. There we are. Right, here we go. There. See, I've got a one-man audience here. And, uh, right. So this is called the Storyland Sprint. But I have to do it just like they do on the television or the radio. And the people who des describe all the things that are happening in a race... They always are excited, and they, they're so excited, you think they might burst. So I could explode at the end of this one, but I'll try not to. So here we are, we're in the summer now, and it's a Storyland Sprint, and they're all lining up for the grand final. Puss is adjusting his new spiky boots, plain green leather, <laughs> no ankle wings allowed. Goldilocks is still puffing after a training run with the three bears. Snow White is giving her seven small friends some last minute tips, but Grumpy still doesn't look happy. <laughs> Meanwhile, the bad fairy is being searched for go faster spells. The little pigs have been placed next to the big bad wolf, which can't be right and Cinderella, wearing only one glass shoe, doesn't have a hope. <gasps> the last few runners are arriving just in time. Rapunzel's at the top of her story tower. She's blowing a whistle <whistles> and they are off. Humpty Dumpty has fallen at the first fence. The ogre has tripped over Red Riding Hood's basket and the billy goat goats are eating the rickety rackety bridge. But the handsome prince has hacked his way through the thorn bushes. He's tipped Sleeping Beauty out of her bed. And he's only just behind Tom Thumb, who is riding the world's fastest rat. It's neck and neck. Only the unicorn can overtake them now. They've reached the last obstacle. A rather tempting house made entirely of sweets. The rat can't resist. The unicorn is spiking the peppermints. The prince is speeding ahead, but... Ah! <gasps> wait! Who is this? Charging past the troll and the ugly sisters. Ah! Oh, running, as, in fact, as fast as he can. Is it? Can it be? Yes! It's the gingerbread man winning Rumpelstiltskin sack of magic gold. And that, my friends, is what I call a happy ending. There. Oh, thank goodness for that. Um, it had to be, it had to be the gingerbread man, didn't it? Um, it is great fun inventing silly sports with weird characters in them. Um, once I got some children to do a, a rugby match with the, the rugby players you were expecting would be the trolls, but they were against the fairies who cheated very badly and all waved magic wands and got the trolls stuck in the mud and they all boo-hooed home. Now, I'm rather fond of this lady. Um, she's not very good at remembering mending where she put her glasses and she is most terribly short-sighted and really the sport she's chosen is possibly the very worst. And this is for the people who are missing the Olympics because I like all the odd sports, the gymnastic things that we don't normally see or the diving into the deep pools or or the archery and this is called the archer who mislaid her glasses she's a little bit posh the archer who mislaid her glasses courageously lifted her bow her first arrow hit a red button which set off the firework show the next arrow battered the trophies 
which sent them all clattering down. Oh, <laughs> the third arrow frightened a corgi, so the queen escaped, clutching her crown. The fourth headed straight for the judges. It mowed wonky lines through their hair. The last whooshed towards the spectators as screams shook the horrified air. The archer who mislaid her glasses, she carefully lowered her bow and asked, did I win any medals? But no one was left to shout, no! Look out for archers who lose their glasses. Don't go near them. Now, this is a rather strange one because a long time ago, I, I was in a school and, and asking them to do ghost stories. And I wanted them to be a bit original, not a graveyard again, not a creaky old castle, something a bit different. And um, that night I had a dream. And in the dream, there were some children sitting in front of me. And um, well, one of them, uh, he was looking very, very puzzled at me as I was explaining that you can, you can put a ghost story anywhere. And uh, I was starting to boast a little bit and said, I, I think I, think I, could, I could do a, 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 any sort of scary place. I, I can make it scary. And the little boy in front said, all right then, remember this is my dream, all right then, what about a fridge? And then I woke up. And I thought, well, that's a challenge. And I think I can't let down that little boy in my dream. And um, so we are now getting into autumn and Halloween time. So we're getting to the spooky stuff. And uh, so for this one, I've got a few sound effects that you could join in with while I'm reading the poem. For instance, I've got something a little bit shivery. So if anybody has got something shivery they could do, that would be wonderful. Um, I've got the fridge itself has got the three clattery. So coconuts are absolutely brilliant. They really do work. And um, and then we've also got, we've got jingle bells there for something else. And um, let me see. We want a rat, a rat sound. Um, so that would be a nice squeak, so if anybody wants to squeak when I tell you about the rat and um, there is a whimper of fear, <laughs> or maybe the hoot of a mythical owl, I've, I've got a, a little owl to, there we are, he's going to join in and uh, so we've got a mythical owl hoot, <laughs> or else an unearthly and ominous howl, oh you'll enjoy doing the wolves won't you, oh! And uh, then we've had the clattering pairs of feet and, um, and a jolly good ending, I think. The one thing about fridges is that um, we never, forget, never really want to go and get inside and scrape away all the ice. Keep that in your mind. Anyway, it's uh, quite a cold autumn day and this is called The Fridge on the Stair. Or possibly... A Winter's Tale. There's a fridge at the top of the steep castle stair. Though last night I am certain a fridge wasn't there. It simply appeared without warning today. And it, it's monstrous and old. And it's blocking my way. And from its insides I am sure I can hear the squeal of a rat or a whimper of fear, Ooh. or maybe the hoot of a mythical owl, Ooh. Ooh. or else an unearthly and ominous howl. Ooh. The brute starts to tilt, then it stumbles downstairs on flat, rusty feet, two clattering pairs. Now its door lurches open, it gapes like a cave. Is that any way for a fridge to behave? 
It's lumbering closer. Its cold breath across me. And an icy voice crackles. Can someone defrost me? Oh. oh, I hope somebody did. Poor thing. And while we're on the subject of Halloween, um, I have a rather scary book here. I think I'll, I'll put on my nice safe hat. And uh, this one is a good warning to you. Um, this is a spell book. It particularly says, keep out. Don't mess about ever with a wizard's book. It goes like this. If you want to read his spell book, you must take it by surprise. It watches from the bookshelf with its fierce and inky eyes. It hears your softest footfall with its folded paper ears. It sniffs your fear like perfume and it feeds on children's tears. It lurks in dust and shadows where it waits for musty ages to trap your prying fingers in its swift and vicious pages. It tempts you with its secrets. It lures the quick, the clever. It lets you think you've won the game. Then you're lost for ever. <laughs> Keep away from it. Don't touch it. Goodness. Uh, we'll end up with a happy one. I once went to a rescue home looking for another cat. And, um, well, the animal I saw there wasn't quite what you might think. And this is called Santa to the Rescue. We need the Santa hat, don't we? Right, the Santa hat is on and off we go. Old Santa is a kindly soul, so when his deer retire, he nips off to the rescue home to see what he can hire. This year, he hit a problem. The woman shook her head. Oh, no reindeer, sir. I I'm sorry. Would a rabbit do instead? Or what about a gerbil or a rather charming hen? She's not a distant flyer, but she flutters now and then. Old Santa did his best to hide the panic in his eyes. I, I need a creature swift enough to cross the Christmas skies. I need a pet that's strong enough to drag a sleigh, he said. And at that anxious moment, something <coughs> grunted in the shed. Oh, <laughs> that's Lulu, said the woman. I mean, she smells a little bit. And she's far too plump and grubby, but she's frisky and she's fit. So Santa paid the rescue fee, which wasn't very big, then introduced his reindeer to their teammate, Lulu Pig. So if you hear at midnight farmyard noises in the sky, or if you catch the pitter pat of trotters trotting by, Remember, Santa's magic and at Christmas pigs can fly. Thank you for listening to me and I hope I've given you some good ideas and a bit of fun.